What is down, everybody? It is your main course, Little Pinky. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about snakes. So, if you've got uh, snake phobia, I don't know what it's called, serpentophobia, something like that, maybe don't watch it. But you could still try and face your fears and be a real champion. Fist bump. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. But today, we're talking about a, a very special kind of snake that will probably strengthen your fear in snakes maybe tenfold to be completely honest uh me i'm not a i'm not a, i'm not a scaredy cat i'm not afraid of snakes cuz i'm not weak i'm scared of large birds snakes don't really freak me out i don't really i think they're kind of cool um, uh, you know, whatever. It is what it is. But today, we're going to be talking about a snake. You, you've seen snakes on the plane? I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane! Maybe. Probably not. Title kind of explains the movie, though. It's not, it's not really that, in, that deep. Snakes on a plane, you know? The snakes that we're going to talk about today, uh, don't need a plane to get places quickly. They don't need a plane to to perfect air travel. These snakes can fly on their own. Now, I will admit, fly is a little misleading. They glide, as most flying animals do uh, that aren't birds or bats. Today, we are talking about flying snakes, and they are pretty cool, and it's going to be awesome. So, smash like, subscribe, and uh, get excited. We'll get into how they glide and all of that stuff and some some videos and whatnot in a minute first let's get the let's get the basis of the flying snake laid out okay so flying snakes are in the genus chrysopelia there are five different species of flying snakes that are known of they're not known that much about them so there might be some more species scattered around but you've got chrysopelia ornata which is the largest of the species. You've got Chrysopelea paradisi, which is, in my opinion, the prettiest. Look at this fellow. Mm -mm -mm. You've got Chrysopelea peleus, which is the smallest and rarest species. Keep that in mind. For no, there's, there's no need for you to keep that in mind, but you still should. Then we've got Chrysopelea rhodepleron, which is the hardest to pronounce. And then you've got Chrysopelea taprobanica, which you know, kind of reminds me of tapioca pudding. I don't, I don't, I can't explain it. So there's five different kinds. They were first recognized as kind of like these snakes can fly. That should be they should be a different species, I think. In the night 1890s. So this was a while ago. So this was like like these snakes were flying before I was flying. Isn't really that impressive, but it's something. They live in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, the Philippines, China, India, Sri Lanka, things like that. Vietnam, Laos, places in that area is where these uh, snakes reside. Not Australia, which is kind of surprising to me, but I guess there aren't that many trees in Australia to, like, glide from to and fro, you know? They live up to 10 years. Their life, rough lifespan is 10 years, and that's kind of estimated with uh, all the species taken into consideration kind of like some are a little more some are a little less you know you know how science works the smaller species like the the chrysopelea peleus uh grows to about two feet while the larger species such as chrysopelea ornata grow to up to four feet in length so that's like pretty long especially to see flying through the, i mean just you're just chilling out and then you look up and there's a four foot snake flying right at you. Fangs out. Now you wouldn't really have to worry about these fangs being out because they are only mildly venomous and aren't really dangerous to humans. Dangerous to small prey, such as mice, frogs, birds, bats, lizards. That is their diet. So yeah, they eat things, small small prey, usually. Um, I mean, birds and bats are kind of getting up there and in challenge, but things like rodents and frogs, lizards, stuff like that. Normal snake food, I would say, unless you're a python. Then it's 
medium-sized children. But yeah, so their venom, not very dangerous to us. Uh, only a few cases that have been medically significant uh, have happened. I'm not too sure what medically significant is. I don't think anyone's died from it, so you don't really have to worry at all. Let me eat a banana real quick, if you don't mind. So upon further research of the Chrysopelea ornata, which is the largest one, remember that. Remember, I told you that. It is one of the more common of the flying snake species as well, and it is sometimes killed. Well, it's oftentimes killed by locals in Southeast Asia where it resides. It's uh, it's oftentimes killed just because they, they kill all snakes, you know. Um, there are a lot of people are under the impression that all snakes are venomous and dangerous. So they kill the snakes and sometimes they are eaten as food, cooked and chowed down on. Now I could chow down on some Chrysopelea ornata. I'm gonna be honest, man. Next time you're hungry, instead of saying, man, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse, you should say, man, I'm so hungry I could eat a Chrysopelea ornata. Don't say that, don't say that. Don't, don't say anything that I tell you to say. They lay six to 12 elongated eggs, which means the eggs are like, kind of like this banana here. They're elongated. And also, if you're looking for a Chrysopelea ornata, if you're just, you're scouring, you're like, Right now you're thinking about mm, how much is a flight to, to Southeast Asia. If I, if I leave now, I could, I could probably get there. And after a small amount of searching, I could probably find one of these snakes. And then if I, if I really hide them in my bag well, probably won't be caught in customs coming back with it. I think I can make this work. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll sail back. Buy a sailboat there. If I dip underneath Africa, I could probably... You can probably get up to Florida pretty quickly. Don't worry. Stop stressing. Because they are readily available in the exotic pet trade. However, be wary. Because these snakes often die very quickly once captivated. Not captivated. Once captive. Now, we will move on to them flying. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a snake fly. So this is probably the most intriguing section. I'm going to start this by reading an excerpt from Wikipedia. This is straight from Wikipedia about how it glides. It climbs using ridge scales along its belly, pushing against the rough bark of tree trunks, allowing it to move vertically up a tree. Upon reaching the end of a branch, the snake continues moving until its tail dangles from the end of the branch. It then makes a J-shaped bend leans forward to select the level of inclination it wishes to use to control its glide path, as well as selecting a desired landing area. Once it decides on a destination, it propels itself by thrusting its body up and away from the tree, sucking in its ab abdomen and flaring out its ribs to turn its body into a pseudo-concave wing all in the while making a continual serpentine motion of lateral undulation parallel to the ground to stabilize its direction in midair in order to land safely. Basically, I'll, I'll kind of break it down a little bit. So it climbs up the tree like a normal snake with the underscales and goofiness. And it comes out and goes whoop, boop. And then uh, the, the thing I think I found probably the most interesting out of all this is how they like suck in their abdomen, flare out their ribs. That's cool. I can't do that. I wish I could flare out my ribs. That would be pretty. That's a pretty cool party trick. Just like, hey, watch this. You know what I'm saying? How precise they are with where they're gliding, I think, is like... Because they kind of just, like... They get out on the edge, and they, they scour the horizon. They're like, ah. Right there. That one. That, that tree limb right there. Yep. And then they just ping flip off and hit it which is really cool to me because there's not like a you, you just gotta know you know because you don't really have a like a way to go up or down you know you're just kind of gliding you know i guess you could go down faster um also these guys hit trees hard like look at this Isn't that crazy? 
calm down, you know, you're gonna hurt yourself. So imagine if they missed the tree and just like kept going, run head on into a rock or something. That's not gonna be great. It's not gonna be good. That's gonna be unfortunate. As I previously stated, they don't fly, they glide. So it's more of a instead of a you know what I'm saying? They don't have wings, believe it or not. They're snakes. They don't even have legs. Now, another interesting factoid about um, if they're flaring their ribs out, sucking their abdomen in like that to make themselves flatter and kind of kind of concaved in that way, it actually nearly doubles the width of their body. So if they were this wide, now they're this wide, which is pretty crazy. Like imagining, imagine doubling the width of your body. That would look awful odd but you probably would be able to glide fairly well so you might be thinking to yourself why what's the point of gliding as a snake you know well there's multiple i'm kind of a little bit on the fence about this to be honest but it claims that it saves energy i get that like being in the tree and then being in this tree right going from this tree to this tree saves energy by flying from this tree to this tree opposed to slithering on the ground but you had to climb up the tree then you fling to that tree and then like you either got to climb down or fling to another tree like i don't know it seems kind of like an endless an endless jail imprisonment climb up glide down climb up glide down climb up glide down climb up glide down but hey whatever makes a snake happy and it also you don't have to worry about predators on the ground anymore if you're constantly in the air you know so things like badgers i don't think they have badgers in southeastern asia there's kind of why you would glide to avoid predators to save energy Things like that. Now, you're probably wondering how good they are at gliding. You've seen a little bit, but you want to see the, the the max. Are they crossing the Indian Ocean right here, right now? You know, what's what's going on? They're not. They do glide better than the commonly known flying squirrel, who, in all reality, just kind of jumps and falls. To be completely honest, the flying squirrel's not great at flying. I feel, kind of feel bad for the guy. The, the media kind of hypes him up, and he just kind of like, y'all, I just got some extra skin. I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. you know? So the typical flight of a uh, fella is about 10 meters, which is, you know, close to 30 feet. It's a very rough estimate. That's your typical flight. Your typical this tree to that tree is 30 meters. Now, the maximum distance that they can glide. So this is a tall tree. Going like real, real, real good is a hundred meters, roughly, almost three hundred feet, roughly. I don't know why I didn't take the few seconds to to figure out how many feet that was, but I'll just calculate it in my brain real quick. My guess in my brain would be about three hundred and twenty-eight feet. That came from my brain and not from the internet which is an impressive amount of distance i mean that's a football field right there man i mean imagine just like seeing a snake slither up a goal post you know and then just shing, poof, whoosh, all the way to the other goal post that would be pretty cool they can also this is really interesting they can change trajectory mid-flight so like imagine like your snake at the top of a tree right you see a frog on a tree over there right so you're like okay i'm gonna glide to him i'm gonna surprise attack this fool you start going you jump off your tree and the frog's sitting there and he's like that tree limb over there looks kind of kind of cool i'm gonna go to that jumps to that one now you're a snake in midair your target has moved you've got to adapt you've got to improvise you have to overcome and you do because you're a bad ma the top speed of 26 to 33 feet per second or 25 miles per hour that's pretty good that's fast for an animal to move you know what i'm saying like a snake without legs now they have been doing some research on these flying snakes and they've they've made a breakthrough i 
physically laughed out loud when I read this. They made a breakthrough, okay? The, the biggest scientific discovery whilst studying flying snakes in the past 10 years is that the small snakes go further than the big ones. I feel like that's, like, I could have told you that, you know? You could have saved a, a, probably a few hundreds of thousands of dollars and uh, probably a couple of years if you just came to me. They were like, hey, James, bigger snakes would glide further or smaller snakes would glide further? And I'm like, well, probably the, the smaller ones because gravity, you know? Gravity's not really, uh, it's not really a theory anymore. Now, the reason that they're studying these snakes and why, where they hope they're going to go in the future with the study of these snakes is robots that glide in the air. I'm assuming there is some kind of sinister reasoning behind this, but is there not a sinister reasoning behind everything? But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is the flying snake in all of its glory. I don't really have much else to add to this. It's a cool snake. I'm kind of glad they don't live in America any of the Americas, north or south, we're safe, you know, we don't really have to worry. I am slightly worried about this exotic pet trade type deal, because um, that usually doesn't lead to uh, good things, that usually leads to, like, you know, the python being in Florida. It'll work out, if, if that does happen, it won't be a big deal. I just don't really want to uh, see a snake flying towards me, but if I do, I'll handle it. Because I'm a man. A big strong one too. Wearing a sweatshirt so you can't see the guns right now. That's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think of the flying snake. Are you frightened? Are you excited? People have differing reactions of uh, snakes. I've found in my uh, research of the human brain. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Smash like, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, try to make someone else's day better if you can. Thank you. And I'll see all y'all later.